Good evening, and welcome to the Wednesday Word of Wisdom, the WWW. I trust that you had an amazing day, and I also pray that this moment of inspiration will encourage you um, throughout the rest of your week. Um, tonight, I would like to look at a very familiar passage of scripture um, for you Bible readers uh, found in the prophet, um, in the book recorded by the prophet Jeremiah, um, chapter 29, verse 11. And most often I refer to the message uh, version of the Bible, um, and, it, and it reads, I know what I am doing. I have it all planned out, plans to take care of you not abandon you, plans to give you the future that you hope for. Amen. That was Jeremiah 29, 11 in the message um, version of the Bible. And for the sake of tonight's talk, I want to ask you a question. What do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when you don't know what to do? Have you ever found yourself in a helpless situation and you know, you honestly did not know what to do. You felt that your back was against the wall. Um, you looked around and there was seemingly no way out. And you just simply wanted to throw in the towels and just give it all up. Walk away, um, forget about it all and start anew. Can anybody raise their hand to that? I can. So I thought about and I prayed about um, what to share with you all on tonight. And, you know, I hear so many people, um, I've been a, a member of Toastmasters for a long time. And one of the, the things that I remember us talking about, especially when we would mentor new Toastmasters, you know, they would feel overwhelmed when they would get this initial um, manual that they where they had to complete all of these speeches. And if you're trying to overcome the fear of speaking in front of crowds and, you know, working on your diction and pronunciation and all of those uh, great things that come with the English uh, language, it can be intimidating. But I remember sharing with many of my mentors, my, I'm sorry, my mentees as having been shared with mentors that I had throughout the program is that life is a story. You know, folks, I don't, they would say, I don't have anything to talk about. How can I come up with a speech? Oh, yes, you can. There is something that is happening in life every day um, that warrants a story. And so um, just on Monday, um, for me, I went to work a normal Monday morning. And by Monday night, when I came home, I was not feeling well at all. Um, I picked up my brother's children from my grandparents um, after having been at work late due to a late meeting and stopped by the grocery store to get some things to finish up dinner, came home, did my daily or nightly routine. And by the time I went to bed, I told my husband, I said, I don't feel well. And he said, well, what does it feel like? Do you feel like you're sick from you know, the food. I said, no, it doesn't quite feel like that. I don't know. I just know that I don't feel well. So I proceeded to lay down and probably fallen off to sleep and probably about an hour into sleep, I caught this Charlie horse in my calf that brought me to tears. Um, the loving husband that he is, and was he he got up he ran downstairs to get some salt um, he began massaging it all the while I am in tears that wasn't enough um, I, I fell back off to sleep and then I woke up chills I mean I am shivering shaking in the bed and I'm like Lord what is going on okay, do I need to get up and pray? I'll do it. You know, sometimes things can happen that can, can force us out of our comfort zones at that moment. Um, but it was a little more than that um, for me. So about 1.30 is when things really started to change and it really started to turn. And so it's, to not interrupt my husband's sleep, I got up and I went downstairs and I got in the recliner 
because I could not get comfortable at this point. I took my took my temperature. I was running a low grade fever and I'm like, oh, you know, what is going on? So I'm rummaging through the, the medicine cabinet, trying to find medicine. And I just tell you, nothing was giving me relief in the moment. So needless to say, Monday was a very long night and all I could do was pray until the break of dawn came because I knew when morning came, you know, things could, could begin to happen. And I remember, you know, I just could remember, I kept hearing it over and over again in my spirit where, you know, we would sing in church and the old saints would say that the darkest hour is just before day. And, and that has so much more meaning to me as an adult because it's something about those those late night hours and that, that hour just before day that seems like the longest hour of the night, especially when you aren't feeling well. And so anyway, I made it to morning, um, had had a terrible night, and I still proceeded to take the children to school, and I, but I barely, I barely made it. I was so weak and I was like, Lord, you know, what is happening here? And I came back, came back home. My husband was still sound asleep and I crawled back in the bed and um, I said, baby, I'm, I'm not feeling well. I said, I am sick. And I said, I need to, I think I need to go to urgent care or somewhere. And he said, okay, I'll take you. I had no energy to even put my clothes on, which is how bad I was feeling. So I lay there and I actually dozed off for a little while. And then um, about 10 o'clock, I think I woke up and he said, come on, baby, let me take you. And I said, okay, but I'm, I'm trying to muster up enough strength to, to get some clothes on, wash my face and everything, and we can go. And so finally we did. Um, but I will tell you just that that 24 hour period uh, was horrible. And while I've you know had moments of not feeling well, it was just something different about, you know, Monday night over into Tuesday morning. But I sit here tonight um, by the grace of God and just thankful um, because when when things um, happen, it, it should put things in perspective. And so even though the Lord had given me the subject of tonight's talk last week, I had no idea, again, what I would go through in order to be able to share and add perspective to tonight's word of encouragement. But as I was reminded of um, the scripture in Jeremiah 29 and 11, of course, as I've been lying down the last couple of days, especially today, yesterday, I cared about no TV. I cared about no phone or anything. But today, you know, and just watching TV and reading different articles and such, you know, there's this whole scare about um, the coronavirus coming to the United States. And I thought about, it, I said, mm, I wonder what the people of God or those who say they believe in God, what are they thinking? How are they feeling? How are those that were already feeling somewhat of hopeless hopelessness, how are they feeling? Um, are they trusting God in these moments? You know, are they recalling the promises um, of God that he, he gave to us in his holy writ? And so when I ask you tonight the question, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Um, it is really calling our faith into action. Um, we say we have faith and it is so easy to say, I believe, but to believe uh, means to act. And it means that we have to do something. We have to exercise something. Uh, we have to put something out there. And so I would submit to you that even during these perilous times of which um, the Bible prophesied about so long ago, that um, wherein you feel hopeless, you must trust God like you never trusted him before. Um, I don't know if you've heard about, but as China is dealing with not only this uh, widespread coronavirus um, I say it's a plague. I say it's man-made. Some may argue, but we have to be alert and aware of what is happening around us. But not only are they um, dealing with that particular issue, but they are now being threatened with a locust swarm. I'm 42 years old. I only read about the locust swarm in the Bible as it relates to the plagues um, that were released upon Israel. 
So in thinking about that, I'm like, okay, Lord, you're speaking. You're speaking to us. You're speaking loudly. You're speaking clearly. We're hearing earthquakes. We're hearing wars and rumors of wars, um, unseasonably warm weather, unseasonably cold weather in other aspects, not understanding what season um, we're in. So there's so much that's going on in the atmosphere. And because of that, it can become overwhelming. And if we're already lacking in faith in a particular area of our lives, it can realistically trickle over into other areas of our lives, causing us to doubt the most holy God, who is the provider and the giver of all things, who promises us in his word, just as he promised the prophet Jeremiah, that he has a plan to prosper all of us. He has given us a hope, one that will not disappoint us. So why are we yet fretted in these moments? I don't know about you, but I have peace like no other. I have joy like no other. Why? Because I know and I understand the promises of God. And even in those moments when I feel like I don't know what to do, oh yes, I do know what to do. I know that I, one, I can pray and I can call on the name of the Lord because the word of the Lord says that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. That that means that I can call the sickness in my body under subjection. I can call um, the the um, the, the thoughts in my mind that are contrary to the, to the will and the word of God. I can call those under subjection. I have the power in me to call all those things under subjection. So why do I fret? Other things, that's what I can do. So in those moments when I don't know what to do, I can pray. Then I can recall all of those many times when, when God came to my rescue, when there did not seem to be a way out. Remember we talked about that in the beginning when you've when your back was against the wall and you just all you could do was come out fighting because you didn't know what else to do. I can recall those moments in those times of uncertainty where God brought me out. And not only did he just bring me out, but he brought me out victoriously. And so you have to do that too. And and it again, it is more in, imperative during this time in our lives because the earth is moaning and groaning with the expectation of the return of our Savior. And if we are not properly positioned to hear, to see, to respond, then it might possibly cause our demise um, from a spiritual standpoint as well as from a natural standpoint. And so uh, it behooves us, saints of God, believers of God, to position yourself, release or activate your faith, look to him, Look to the hills from which cometh your help, knowing that your help comes from the Lord who created this heaven. He created the heavens and the earth, this earth on which we live that seems to be in turmoil and out of control. But do know this, regardless of your situation, regardless of your circumstances, God is in control. And according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he already has it planned out. We just have to trust him because his promise to us is that he will give us the future that you and I both hoped for. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? You can pray. You better trust God. But also recall all of those times in the past when God came through for you and for me, when there did not seem to be any way out. Thank you for listening to this week's Wednesday Word of Wisdom. I pray that your spirit has been encouraged. I also pray that you will hit the subscribe button if you have not already done so and that you will hit the share button and share it with someone that might need to be encouraged as well. I love you and God bless you.